What's going on everyone? Andrew from Riddler Reptiles back with another one. Right, let's get straight into it because we've got three topics that we sort of need to squeeze into this video. Um, so the three topics are um, a debrief of the podcast between myself and Paul uh, over at Paul's Monitors uh, where I was on the Captive Raptors podcast. Uh, the main thing about that one is the conversation we had about keeping royal pythons in a rack. Um, there's going to be clips and then the full description and the link to his video will be below. Uh, the second part is going to be uh, a very small update on the baby snakes that we've got, which does link to what I was saying in the podcast and there's little bits anyway. Um, so we'll see how I'm doing with them, what I've done to their enclosures and things like that. Uh, and then the last one is going to be a very brief touch on what's been going on recently between... Um, Liam over at Reptiles and Research and the guys over at Mutation Creation. So yeah, like I say, this is going to be quite a long video uh, if I'm not careful. Um, so let's just get straight into it um, with regards to the podcast that myself and Paul did. So for a little while, I've been um, questioning myself as an animal keeper as to why I keep snakes in a rack. I don't like it. I don't want to do it anymore. And I'm slowly working on not doing so anymore. Um, now, just a quick one before we carry on. I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again. If we're friends, if we know each other, if we converse, if whatever, we've, we've been in contact, me not wanting to have a snake rack anymore and moving away from it and disagreeing with it does not mean that I no longer like you as a person. The way I look at it is it's similar to like being uh, part of two different religions. You can disagree as much as you want. It doesn't mean you have to hate each other for it. So jumping straight into the first clip, and this is the clip that hit the hardest with most people on uh, when the, that watch this podcast between myself and Paul. Um, he basically asked me, um, where did it all start? The thoughts of me not wanting to keep snakes in Iraq anymore. Um, and quite simply, um, my reasoning was this. This might sound random at first, but hear me out. I was doing the weekly shop at Tesco. Yeah, now you're probably there going, well, what the fuck? Was that got to do with keeping snakes? And I was there and I was looking for eggs. And the first ones I picked up were battery hen chickens. Eggs. Yeah. Oh, I know and what I went, you're going. I know. And what I literally I looked at it and I went, well, no. Why would I buy eggs from chickens that have been kept in small cages and not allowed to roam free and things like that? Yeah. You know, I'm gonna put them down and find the free range chicken eggs because they're they're allowed to roam free and have great lives and and they still lay eggs and it's still lovely. Right, I'm gonna go home to my snake rack where they're breeding to make eggs. In tiny little cages with no stimulus or no enrichment and no natural light. And it's at this point you look at yourself and you go, You fucking hypocrite. Yeah. You're gonna put down the battery hen chicken eggs and go home and, and breed snakes. snakes. Yeah. And that's true. Uh, that's how I feel. That's how I felt then. That's how I feel now. Uh, quite simply, it's hypocritical of me. Um, I don't like it. It's it's as simple as that. I'm looking at the eggs thinking to myself, oh, this is wrong. And then I come home and I've got snakes in a rack. These are big, heavy bodied, beautiful animals that deserve more from us. In the words of most reptile keepers, but who I've heard it most recently from was Paul, um, keeping animals is a privilege, not a right. This is a big snake. She's not even fully grown yet. I don't understand how it can be seemed or deemed acceptable to keep something this big in a 30 litre tub. Now, here's one thing I will say. Make no mistake about it, this isn't a justification. But my tubs are see-through. They've got big water bowls. They've got cork bar they've got hides they've got a little bit of foliage they've got substrate okay now again this isn't me justifying the fact that i keep snakes in racks but this is a lot better than the way some people keep their snakes in racks to keep an animal this big and this well really intelligent in an enclosure that has no day or night cycle no light no enrichment nothing at all apart from paper and the water bowl who only sees light when they're being fed a rat every week, it's just not on. It is absolutely not on. I've got 13 snakes living like this, and I've got one living like this. Do you see what I'm saying? Overhead heat 
currently no UVB, but this is still a work in progress. DIY hide, but plenty of other places to hide, sort of at the minute. A couple of climbing opportunities, but again, this is a work in progress. Now, all right, she's currently balled up and not exploring anything. These are nocturnal animals. Of course she is. Have I seen this snake roaming around and exploring this tank? 100% I have. Big snake, big viv, which the glass needs cleaning to be fair, but it is what it is. That's the smallest problem we've got. Substrate that holds humidity really well. All right, the hide could be better, but again, she's a big snake. I'm yet to get a hide big enough. I don't really like the plastic ones. But look at her and look at this Viv and tell me that doesn't look better. That doesn't look more ideal for a snake this size. Now, is she eating in a tank this size with not much clutter? You can bet your bottom dollar she is. She absolutely smashed her meal the other night. Now, you tell me which one looks better. Do you know what I mean? And the one in the Viv, hers isn't even done yet. There's, all right, it's a big four foot space with clutter and things like that. But at the minute, she hasn't got any um, climbing opportunities as such. She's got logs that she can go over, fine. But at the minute, there's, there is overhead heat, but there's no UVB yet, right? So I'm still not even happy with that. But you tell me which one's better. I, I don't understand how anyone can look at those two different setups and choose the tub over a four foot enclosure, which by the way, like I say, isn't even complete yet. You tell me, there they are, they're right there. Um, with all of this being said, another point that I made to, um, another point that I made to Paul was with regards to the amount of money that some of these snakes cost and the fact that you don't see anyone who's starting in the hobby with a 15 grand snake. When you're on Facebook groups and someone's asking, why is their snake not shedding? It's not a banana blade clown pastel inchy triple recessive. Do you know what I mean? It's a pastel or it's a wild type or it's a lesser. People are basically breeding these expensive snakes to sell to other breeders, to have in their collections, to breed more snakes with those genes so that they can sell it back to other breeders. Where does it stop? Where does it stop anyway? But that's a whole other thing. Um, another part of the podcast, Paul basically asked me this question here. So what behavior differences have you noticed, if any, from her, from being in the forefoot to now being in Iraq? Which, to be fair, is quite a simple question. The way he reacted was very justified because my answer was, this is the thing with Iraq. It's hard to see any behaviors. Oh, God. <laughs> you can't see any. Do you know what I mean? That's like, not an answer I wanted to hear, but it's so true. It is. And this it's is what so I mean. True. I'm being open and honest with you. You know, I have no, a I appreciate enough, your self awareness. Yeah. Before you like, carry I reckon, on, I just want to say, like, hats off to you, mate. You're an, yeah. you're an inspiration. Yeah. And don't even worry about asking, do you want me to cut that bit out? No, leave <laughs> it. I cannot see behaviors because all I do is open. All right. Every now and again, oh, I'll get them out and handle them fine. But I can't see any behaviors, mate, because I open up a draw oh, pick mate, out their it, shit, it makes me cringe yeah, so much chop up their water and feed them a rat and it's true it's true i've even got transparent tubs and you cannot see the way they behave in there because they've got nothing to do um so this is what i'm saying we need to start opening people's eyes we need to start seeing these animals deserve more they deserve better yes i currently have a racking system does that make me a hypocrite possibly but they're not staying like that. So one thing that actually did come out of that podcast or one of many things, because a lot of people reach out to us, one thing that did happen was genuinely someone reached out to Paul and said, I've got, I think it was four or five snakes in a rack. And he said, um, he basically said, after listening to you and Andrew from Riddler Reptile speaking on the podcast, I've decided that all of my snakes are going into vivariums. It's never too late to admit you've made a mistake. If you feel as though you don't want a snake crack anymore and you want better for your animals, that's a good thing. 
Don't feel like you've done it now, so maybe you should just carry on. If you need help, ask for help. If you feel like you've made a mistake, admit to it, hold your hands up. And that is where you can start improving, not just for yourself, but for your animals as well. But those are the biggest parts that uh, I wanted to discuss about the podcast in this video here. So let's get on to the next part, which actually, to be fair, is still linked to that podcast. So with regards to the baby snakes, here's what I said about the way I was keeping the baby snakes. Is I don't mind as much in a way, like as long as it's temporary, because at the minute I've got babies in a small rack. They're not in 30 litre tubs, they're small. I'm going to but... change your mind. I'll let you finish this and I'll tell you about a study I heard about lizards. And I'm assuming snakes will be the same and it will blow your mind. All right, I'm actually looking forward to that. I'll tell you what, yeah. I'll finish this and then hopefully yeah, 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 change you finish my mind. That. But I look at it and I'm like, all right, they're in very basic enclosures. They've got a hide, they've got heat, they've got water, they've got, you know, it is paper towel at the minute. But the yeah. reason I look at that is, and this isn't just me doing bias research in that instance, I want to see their wheeze and their poos. Mm -hmm. I want to see that they're shedding properly. I want to see that they're eating and making sure they're not choking on cocoa husk. And it's more... It's, it's separation almost just to keep that little extra eye on them just to make sure that actually it is eating it is passing the rubbish out after and having a shit it is drinking it is so that's why and again this isn't me justifying a rack this is me saying as a baby mm -hmm. before it goes elsewhere maybe that's not so bad if yeah. you know what i mean to which paul came back and basically said this i read that reptiles this was about lizards, but reptiles, because yeah. they don't have learnt behaviour. They don't have parents to teach them. Mm. They learn from their environment. So you're instantaneously putting an animal into a basic, plain, sterile environment. Mm -hmm. Let's just say it's in there for three months. Mm. That's three months it's not learnt how to climb, how to mm. swim, how to dig, how to move in and out of a sun gradient. Yeah. Day one, my Aki's go into naturalistic bioactive enclosures. Yeah. Can every single one poo properly? No idea. Yeah, yeah. No idea. Yeah. Do I just trust that what's healthy will survive? Yeah. But yeah. like on that though, just because obviously we're trying to help people now that find themselves in this predicament, why don't you just go out and buy some ego earth or why don't you go out and pick some leaf litter or go and get some sticks and put it in with your royals and just give them that level of stimulus and enrichment that they've never once had to be fair now that you've said that because i've not heard that before and i'll mm. tell you why i've not heard that before because <laughs> no one wants to say it yeah because if one big boy says it that's it he's either going to be shunned from the community and turned into a wanker yeah. or he's going to make everyone else look bad and things like that yeah. but no one wants to be the first to say it. Like I say, to be honest with you, if you do get Royal Python owners or rat keepers listening to this, they're probably going to hate me. What, Luckily... do you think they're, what do you think they're going to do for me? And so with that being said, before and after, right here. So this is the before. And there's after. Look at that. Perfect. Just what they need. No, that's bullshit. And that's the after. It's been done for about five minutes and they're already out and about exploring. Now, I kid you not, I upgraded the first one from obviously paper towel um, and all of that to substrate, to um, sphagnum moss, leaf litter, everything like that. And about five minutes later, I checked again just to have a look and that snake was out about exploring, sniffing, looking under the leaves, things like that. These are intelligent animals that deserve more. It's as simple as that, you know. In actual fact, you just saw a clip of it as well. So, yeah. That was another part of the podcast that we did speak about. Uh, I stand by what I said as to why I kept them on paper towel and things like that. It was for health reasons, to make sure that they were eating, make sure they were pooing, wee, and all of that shedding fine. Now that I know that they are that's a good start. Their little brains are working um, and it's better for them. So that's two down, one thing to go. So a shout out to Liam over at Reptiles and Research, who recently put a video up uh, basically explaining the problems behind keeping snakes in racks. Uh, it basically dispelled some myths. It 
really did show you what it's doing to them, to their brains and to them as animals. Um, one of the hardest hitting parts for me was he basically said where I could be misquoting, but the gist of it was uh, where they say that an animal in a rack is tame and calm. It's basically just given up. There is nothing for it to basically be looking for to do. It's just in a box with a water bowl. It sees light once a week, maybe uh, gets fed a rat and that's it. It's not tame. It has just given up. If you want to see that video, I've linked it below. It's very, very interesting. I took it on board. However, the guys over at Mutation Creation Canada didn't. Now, Liam actually said to me after I spoke to him about that video that someone was filming a rebuttal. Now, in my head, a rebuttal is someone coming back and saying, right, I see your point that you made there, but this, these statistics and this research has shown that you're wrong because of this and that. That's an argument, that's a discussion, that's something that you can listen to. The guys over at Mutation Creation Canada decided to instead say that the education system had failed him, um, that what he was saying was some of the stupidest fucking things they've ever heard. That's a quote. Um, and just basically belittled the guy. Now, they've embarrassed themselves here. They're quite big in the Royal Python or Ball Python game. And their reaction online to someone showing statistics, research, scientific papers, and he quoted them as well. He cited his sources. Their reaction there was to basically call him stupid and tell him that he's wrong. On what basis, guys? That's not an argument. You've embarrassed yourselves. It's as simple as that. I will leave the link to both of those videos below. Um, I was watching it. I was watching the one where they did respond to Liam. And it's just awful. I don't understand how they can look at themselves and go, that was a good, good comeback, good comeback. It's awful. Liam's basically there citing his sources. It's all there. It's all there. It's all below. Um, but shout out to you, Liam, because the way you handled their response was very diplomatic, very calm and collected. And that's what we need. Fair play to you, mate. Honestly, um, shout out to you. But guys over at Mutation Creation, you're probably not going to see this. But if you do, uh, give your heads a wobble because you've just embarrassed yourselves, really. Um, it is what it is. So, um, yeah, I think we've covered all three of those. Um, hopefully this video isn't too long. But we'll see. But anyway, everyone, with that being said, um, that's the updates. Um, Monitor Month was really good. I enjoyed that. I hope you all did too. It is in a, uh, what's it, a playlist, Monitor Month playlist, if you want to watch them all back um, and support your boy. Um, also, myself and Jacob are going to be at the uh, Advanced Herpetological Husbandry uh, Conference in, I think it's about two weeks' time. Uh, we're only going to be there for the Saturday, but really looking forward to that. That's going to be really, really good. It's going to hopefully open my eyes a bit more. Uh, if you're going, let me know below. And uh, obviously, I'm not big time. This isn't me saying, hey, come and get an autograph. No, just come and say hello. You know what I mean? I mean, if, if you know I'm going and you see me, give me a shout. And um, yeah, we'll say hello. Um, but other than that, that's it. Um, until the next one, which I'm not sure when that is because I've just started shift work. Hence the bags under my eyes that you could probably carry your uh, weekly shop home in. Um, that's it. So as per, please like, comment, share, subscribe, all of the good stuff. And we will see you in the next one. A peace out.